Good evening, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of Monday Night Must See TV with the Hudson Valley Squares. We got a small crew tonight because, of course, it's in the middle of the summer and everybody's out doing all sorts of fun stuff. Not that this isn't fun, but, you know, it's uh, it's Monday night. It's the day after a long weekend. And uh, we've got Ryan Scow and Chris Allo in the house tonight. Greetings, gentlemen. How you doing, on, fellas? I'm good. This is kind of like a almost like a part three uh, we've been doing these kind of episodes about uh, stuff we either don't get to see with our favorite bands live or, you know, albums we wish they would play in their in their entirety. Well, now tonight is kind of like, and this, these are all Chris's ideas. Uh, how about uh, songs that you wish bands that you go see fairly often, current bands, you wish they would just drop from their set list? And again, I think this was Chris's idea. Maybe Ryan's idea. I'm not sure. One of you guys. I think it was Chris's idea. I think it was Chris's idea. So you know, bands that we see fairly often that still play out live, that every time we go see them live, we're like, God, I'm hoping they don't play that song tonight. But you know, I know they're going to play it and they play it. Uh, so we'll have Ryan kick us off. Uh, we'll just, we'll go one at a time. And we'll keep going until we run out of, uh, run out of uh, stuff to talk about here. So Ryan, uh, what do you got? All right. Well, this was tough for me because uh, my, my concert going habits, uh, don't really lend themselves this topic too much. Uh, I, I go see like a lot of smaller bands and clubs and stuff uh, where I don't know, but just, it's, I don't know. It's just not an issue. It's not something I really think about, you know, if you go see like a death metal band, they're going to play 45 minutes of death metal. So that's what it is. But that said, uh, I'm going to start with Iron Maiden and uh, the kind of the knee jerk reaction. The first song that came to my head was run to the Hills. Cause they always fucking play it. And I, but you know what? I liked the song but that's not the song I want to go with. And it's actually a song from uh, Brave New World, which is one of my favorite albums from them past the first uh, 80s albums. And it's Blood Brothers. And for some reason, they play that over and over every tour. And the chorus just goes on. And it's not, it's not a bad song, but of all those newer albums, especially that album, uh, there was other songs they could play. And then for a while, they brought in The Wicker Man, which I, I think is a much better song. It was the lead off track. And there's a whole bunch of other great songs, Ghost of the Navigator, title track. They could have, you know, Out of the Silent Planet, one of the songs, which I've never heard live. Uh, they could have picked all kinds of songs from that album. But nope, they brought back Blood Brothers. So I know it's been said before, they kind of be lazy with their setless choices. And we're well, Blood Brothers. Yeah, it's just, it's not a bad song, but it's like. God. No, it's a, it's a bad song. All right. It's a bit, <laughs> I don't need to hear it ever again. I'll say that. Yeah, it's same. Uh, There's plenty of other songs. There's songs from Dance of Death, the follow-up album that are great. They could have been playing. Uh, but no, they just get like, nope, we're putting that back in the set list, boys. And uh, I don't know if they're doing it on their current world tour. Uh, but you know what? You roll, you flip a coin and you got a 50-50 shot. They're probably playing it. So yeah. when I see them in the fall, it'll be a fucking surprise if I hear that or uh, Wicker Man. But I won't be shocked if I hear Blood Brothers again. So that's my first choice. I don't, I don't mind the song so much when I hear it, when I play the record and listen to it. Uh, yeah, that, that's the thing. Yeah, I, I don't skip it. Play live. it. You know what it is? It, it's like this mid pace kind of sing along thing. And I'm like, ah, you're big, come on, guys. Or yeah, it's like, I hear you. Yeah, I, I totally uh, it kind of, I don't know, it, it, in a set list, it kind of is like, all right, it's like a dead spot. If that makes sense. But yeah, when I play the album, and I play that album a lot, uh, I don't skip, I don't skip any songs on it. I love the album, but uh, why don't you go with the fucking title track for the album or pretty much any other song on the album, including Wicker Man, bring that back. But yeah. Oh, Harris likes Blood Brothers, so Blood Brothers we get. I hear you. All right, Chris, what do you got? Well, Ryan, that is a fantastic pick because I hate that fucking song. Um, and I it, it saddens me to say that, yep, yeah, Iron Maiden are playing Blood Brothers on their current tour. Not surprised um, at all. And But my pick uh, is another song that, yeah, it's a classic song, um, but I am sick to death of seeing Iron Maiden perform live. There was like one tour that I saw that they didn't, that they dropped it, which I loved. And it's funny because I remember reading an interview with Nico McBrain. Uh, God, this must have been like 15 years ago where he was like, if, if Steve Harris ever cuts Hallowed Be Thy Name from the set list, he's like, I'm quitting the band. Well, Steve did cut it a few years ago which was great for me because um, I'm just sick to death of that song. Really? Um, yeah, I, I, I yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, I'll yeah. take. But I thought they they cut it for legal reasons, though. I thought there was the, well, there reasons. was something with that too. I do I do remember that for whatever reason it was dropped for a little bit, but it's it's back in. So yeah, that means 
you know, this this fall I have to sit through three new songs from Sinjitsu, Blood Brothers, and Hallowed Be Thy Name. And I'm like, shit, that's five out of 15 songs that I don't fucking like. I'm like... You sure you don't want to sell those tickets, Chris? <laughs> and I'm, Pete, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking I'm about curious it. I'm curious if anybody's going to comment that they all... Because you that's the only time I've heard someone say they don't like that song. They like I mean, what you like, but that, yeah. that's... Uh, I mean, you know, I used to like it. But after 40 years of hearing it on the record, and it's still, you know, I did listen to it recently on, on the album, and it, it it didn't bother me live. I'm sorry. It didn't bother me when I re-listened, of course, because I bought Number of the Beast again for the, like, eighth time. But, um, but yeah, live, I don't know. It just it just doesn't do it for me anymore. Uh, it, it's too long. I just, I don't know. And I would just rather hear something else, you know. You want to you cut the epic hallowed be thy name and throw in passion okay. mail or whatever the f- fucking anything Alexander because iron great. maiden are lazy as fuck give me anything alexander the great wh- cool. I, whatever i don't fucking care do anything but as much as i love maiden they're lazy fucks and they're not going to do it they're doing whatever the fuck they want to do and they're still making money and laughing all the way to the bank well, I wasn't going to pick them quite yet, but since we're going to kind of on a roll here, Got to run let's, out of the pile, uh, let's pile on Maiden right now. My choice <laughs> is two minutes to midnight. Oh, God. Yeah, I think they played that like every time I've ever seen them, or for the yeah. most part. And I, just, I like that song too, but I, I you know what? They, I don't dislike they, it, but they I play don't want to play live anymore. I just, I just, I just don't. Two minutes to midnight. It's just, I don't know. It's just. Not a terrible song. Uh, I just, I'm just tired of it live. Just tired of it. Uh, you know, Chris, you're absolutely right. They've got this huge discography, and there's like this, this group of songs that they just yep. bring back over they, and over. Yeah, they'll, they'll like two minutes to midnight. They'll drop. Like, they're not playing at this tour, yes. but I, be, I bet you they'll bring it back for the next one. Oh, you you know, for, for years they didn't do Aces High, and now they are fucking beating us over the head with Aces High. Oh, they opened the sentence with it. They closed. Yeah, yeah it's like a big, uh, it's like a, you know, a ten pole fucking yeah. song. So it's that. right. There's a small group of 20 something songs and they just keep pulling those same, those same songs over, yeah. over and over again. And there's so many good songs on Power Slave. Yeah. Back in the Village. Oh, I, I would believe. kill to hear Back in the Village. Yeah, that shit would be awesome. But what? that's the thing, because those songs are equally as good. Yes, I've never fucking heard "Back in the Village" once, and you know what? I we never will. No, <laughs> never no, will. I, ne- I never thought, you know, since we're talking Maiden, I never thought we'd get "Flight of Icarus" after yeah, I was you know, whatever idea. thirty something years. And okay, that was cool. They brought it back, and they're still playing it. But you know, a couple more other than that would be great. You know, like like I always say, you know, you can you can look at the Iron Maiden versus Judas Priest fight ninety nine times, but the one you know, the one battle that you cannot dispute is Judas Priest digs deep on their set lists and Maiden are just lazy fucks. Absolutely. It's like, you can't argue. You really can't. Yeah, that's there's, no there's, there's, no, there's no counter argument. So I didn't look at the set list for this upcoming tour. Anywhere Eagles there? I'm sure there isn't. Uh, no, I, uh, I, I just had it open. I thought they dropped Where Eagles Dare um to make room for sinjutsu them three songs uh I, fuck i just had it where the hell is it i'm just gonna show up and i mean i know they're playing the first three songs on sinjutsu but yeah I'm that's the enjoy. um that's the opening of the show and then i feel like you're gonna get you know what, what we're all talking about yeah. For the next hour or so. So yeah, here's the uh yeah, I mean Maiden typically do 16 songs for whatever reason. Now this year it's 15, but they're opening up right Senjutsu, Stratego, Riding on the Wall, Revelations. I like a lot from the yeah. Revelations, I'm glad they put back in. I, I do is, like Revelations. That's a great song. Ryan's favorite Blood Brothers. There it is, waiting for me. For fuck's sake, why do they bring this back? The Blaze Bailey Classic Sign of the Cross. Not a bad song, but I would rather hear Bruce play one of his own songs because we've heard Bruce play fucking Sign of the Cross a whole bunch of times. Yeah, they were really beating the shit out of that one there, too. Yeah. Good song, but yeah, it's a little uh time to let it go, boys. Yep. Then the real the one of the, the real gem from the last couple of years, Flight of Icarus. Another one that's it's a, you know, it's a great song, but it's been beat to death. Fear of the Dark. 
Yeah, they got to play that. And then you're going to get the trooper and number. Well, of the then, beast. then they're doing Hallowed Be Thy Name. Then they're closing out with Number of the Beast, followed, of course, by Iron Maiden. And then the encores, the trooper. I, again, this song is a great song. So uh, going to play that they're doing the Klansman from you know the Blaze Bailey era, which is a great track, but I, I don't need it. I'd rather hear Bruce sing one of his own songs, Run to the Hills, and then the final encore, Ace is High. So <laughs> yeah. Hold the hold. Did you name a single song from the first two albums? Just there, Iron Maiden. Just yeah. Iron Maiden. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna figure. You know what? They it, it does piss me off that they ignore killers. Uh, oh, totally. Right now and then you get a wrath child. But to be yeah. honest with you, I could almost include Iron Maiden here. I know they have to play it, but yeah. there are True. way more songs I'd rather hear. Yeah, those from albums. those first two, all kinds of. You know, they're gonna... never one of my favorite songs out of yeah. those first two albums ever. Bring back fucking Phantom of the Opera for fuck's sake! But right? yeah. I mean, there's. Yeah. I figured there's this would be kind of like a maiden pile on with this topic. <laughs> I know we could. We we're already halfway through oh, the show. Yeah. Right? We could do, we could do picked, a whole show on it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I only picked one song from them because I knew we could, you could easily oh, beat yeah. the shit out of them for an hour. Yeah. Let's just trash them, and that, that's like they're my favorite band. But yeah, I mean, listen, they're amazing. Like, like I said, I I bought the new record and I fucking hate it. Then I'm, I'm the idiot that also spent fifty bucks to join the fan club. And then bought four tickets to their upcoming tour and pre ordered two of the shirts, all for a, a tour for a record that, that that I don't really like. Dedication. It's dedication. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> a true fan, Chris Allo. That is a true fan. Yes. All right. Let's 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 move on from Maiden here. Uh, what do you got, Ryan? All right. I'm going to bash Priest a little bit. Although Chris is right, uh, they're not guilty on the same level, uh, but they've got some songs that I don't ever want to hear again. And, uh, I don't know. I thought about this. Some of the obvious ones, you know, uh, breaking the law. I like it. Stupid, silly little song, but I don't know. I don't get tired of it. I don't really get tired of it. You've got another thing coming, uh, though it's pretty much in the same mold. But the song that I just I don't want to fucking hear and I don't like is Living After Midnight. That's just that same kind of there's something about it that kind of separates it from those other two. and makes it extra irritating for me. I can't even really put a finger on it. Maybe it's a little too sing-alongy, like you hear it at like a fucking wedding, old people dancing to it. And <laughs> you see grandma dancing. That's, that's like that kind of song, you know. Like, uh, you know, it shook me all night long by ACDC. You know, all the old people get up, start fucking. I don't, I don't know. Just something about that song, and I, I can't remember. I mean, I've seen Priest a lot. I don't recall how often they played it. Although I know it's pretty regular, but it's not like Garen fucking T. They're gonna play it every time, but. Yeah, that's the only pre-song where I could say, please stop playing it. But you're right. Otherwise, they always mix it up. They play stuff you want to hear. And even some of the big hits, you know, I don't mind the big hits with these guys. I can listen to, you've got another thing coming. Uh, it'd be nice to hear a little more heading out to the highway. They can get ripped. They can kick fucking uh, Living After Midnight to the curb, bring heading out to the highway back. And I like that one a lot more. But that's honestly the only pre-song I feel this way about. But yeah, fortunately, it gets to... It shows up in the set lists more often than not. So yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think the last time that well, uh, I saw them where they didn't. End I was going to say, I, I completely agree again with Ryan. Not to, for, hey, first we had a pile on Maiden. I'm with you 100%. My number two choice is Judas Priest. And yeah, I'm doing a double shot here. And absolutely, I am sick to death of breaking the law and living after midnight. And I mean, I've seen Priest 40 something times, just going from memory, and my memory is pretty fucking good. I can think of two times that I saw a Priest where they dropped, you've got another thing coming, but I don't ever remember them not playing both Breaking the Law and Living After Midnight. Even when they dropped, you've got another thing coming, they, they still they did around. both of those. Yeah, I feel like every time I've seen, I've only seen them about 10 times, but I feel like. Which is, hey, that's still a lot. That's a lot feel like it's not it's always been there in every set yeah you know, right at the end you get the encore they come back here we go you know they're gonna yeah. do hellbent for leather which rules yeah you know, no, I, do, I still uh, want hellbent for, you're right all kinds of other songs which you know they're gonna play and they roll roll and then you hear living after midnight and like ah fuck well, i know I, I know pete and i talked about it when they when they came around what was that was that march march april ish one of them this year and if i'm not mistaken those were the last two songs like it was like metal gods and then breaking the law and live living after midnight I was and as soon as there. metal gods was done i was i was out of there i was getting back to my car as quick as possible i figured it out i tell you why i don't like that song it's a fucking hand clapping song 
I hate hand clapping songs. Oh, live after clapping. midnight. Fuck that. Don't clap hands at a fucking metal show. That's mm-hmm. right. Throw a fucking beer. Smile. That's why I don't like it. It's a fucking hand clapping song. So. <laughs> Uh, we're on a roll because my priest pick is also living after midnight, but quite frankly, you can dump breaking the law in there as yeah. well. Uh, I can, you know what, Chris, if memory serves me correctly, I believe one of the, the area shows on this last tour that seems like it's been going on for years, they did not play. You got another thing coming. Yes. Right? I, I can remember in my head two the Saxon two shows at the, in New yeah. Jersey. See, I thought it was one of the shows with Uriah Heep, but I could be wrong. Oh, up in Albany. But, you but be, you I think be. you're right in that it was one of the firepower because I saw like five shows on the I five saw or six four shows on the firepower. Yeah. Yep. It was it was definitely once on the firepower uh, tour, and the other time that I remember was I saw Priest I think four times with Ripper Owens, and one of those shows they dropped. You've got another thing coming. So so yeah, recently they they definitely did drop it. Um, which proves that they're, you know, they're one of their arguably one of their biggest hits. They're okay with dropping. Yeah, but these two, man. Ugh, yeah, they God. just won't. They won't. And, I, and you know what? I can I can suffer through breaking the law. I don't really like it. You know, what? I sure. never really liked either one of those two tracks. Yeah. Even way back in the day, I was never a big fan of those two songs. But man, I just every time I know exactly when Living After Midnight is coming. Here's how bad it is. I would rather hear any day of the week Turbo Lover over Living After Midnight live. Because Turbo Lover actually is kind of fun live. I never need to listen to it on the album. Anymore. It's better to sing along to. Although, you know what? When they dropped Turbo Lover and they brought in Out of the Cold or Out in the Cold, yes. the ballad from that album, way better. I'm like, that yeah. was a smart spe- And that's the kind of thing they do. They'll do that. And they Absolutely. drop Turbo Lover. And I'm like, this is a great choice. That's my favorite song from Turbo was Out in the Cold. So, yeah. And yeah, they them- definitely, like we said, they they dig deep, man. I will, I'll never forget. You know, when we did those two shows in Albany for, for Priest and, and right, Uriah Heep, yep. like the second night, they were already doing like a ton of obscure shit. But then the second night, for no reason at all, for like the first time in 15 years, they just decided to pull out Hot Rockin'. It's like, wait, what? Yeah, not my favorite song, but I'm like, holy shit, this is so cool that they decided to just do this. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Priest, you can always count on them for at least, you know, 30, 35% of the set list is going to be something you yeah. really don't expect. It's going to be cool, yeah. Even if you heard I mean, it before, it's not the same fucking song over and over again. Right. Yeah, I mean, who knew that I, w- I would actually live to see Judas Priest play not one, but two songs off of Rockarola. I mean, yeah. what what universe is that in? Yeah. Rare. It's a rare universe. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, living after midnight. Ugh. Yeah, no. Please. And, yeah. and I, I I leave as soon as it's, I'm, I'm yeah. done. I'm That's the nice thing about it. You're like, yeah, I, I can go find my car now. Yeah, start yeah. walking. Yeah. Well, I, I did get tickets again for Priest in October in Albany, and I am hoping that they do end with breaking the law and after midnight so I can get out of there and beat the traffic. Yep. Got that hour and 10 minute drive, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. All right, Ryan, back to you. All right. So this, uh, I do have five picks, but uh, the last two I got to dig into the. Uh, well, we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, so this band is going to be Blue Oyster Cult, and it's a song that they're always going to fucking play, and they have to play. And every time I've seen them, uh, which is a lot, uh, getting somewhere between 15 and 20 times now, uh, a lot of the crowd just kind of sits there and it's like, oh, wow, look at that. Look at the ceiling. Wow. And as soon as they play one song, you know the fucking song, Don't Fear the Reaper. That's it. Everybody's uh, clapping their fucking hands and shaking their booty and, and standing up in the aisle. Running down to the front of the stage. Running down to the front of the stage. You know what? Uh, I think it's a good song. Uh, I hate that fucking cowbell joke. I hate the shit out of that stupid fucking joke. But it's a good song. Uh, Godzilla, another big hit. Don't mind that one bit. They play it every time. I think it's great. Burning for You, another big song. They play every time. Don't mind it. Actually, I love that song. But, man, you know they're always, always going to play Don't Fear the Reaper. And uh, it's, just, it's just one of those things where it's almost like, it's like they just got to do it because people came probably just to hear that fucking song. You know, at least that's the impression I got. I haven't seen him a lot of times. And as soon as, you know, Buck even kind of starts off with this extended uh, guitar solo bit where it's like, he's going to do it. He's going to go into it. He's probably like putting off the inevitable, you know, and here comes that cowbell come roar in. And that's it. You get the song. So man, it's a good song, but it's just one of those things where unfortunately they're a great band. They're kind of a cult band where they have this huge discography, all these great songs from all over the decades, but they only really had one like ultra mega hit, you know? So when that kind of band goes out, they're going to play stuff that you want to hear. We want to hear. And they always do. They always mix up the set list. 
They usually pull out some a lot of early stuff. They do a pretty good job. I mean, not as good as Priest, but overall pretty good. But at the end of the night, you're going to get fucking, you know, you're going to get whether you want it or not. You're going to get yeah. it. Yeah. And I, I actually like the song. But I like it too, but I feel the same way about you. I just like every time I go to see Bluers to Colton, I've seen them a lot too in more recent years. It's like, you know, you get us the diehards there who are just into whatever they're going to play and they pull out all these cool nuggets and, you know, the deeper tracks. And then you look around and you're like, why does it seem like 70% of the people here just oh, came to hear one song? Yeah, like, oh, and they little, just kind of stare at the space and all these other songs. And then as soon as Don't Fear the Reaper comes on, they, they go bananas. And then they're like, the fact, the last time we saw them, Ryan, do you remember they didn't play it last? They played it like before the encore. Yeah. Well, there were people who were like, as soon as they were done, they, they left. They're like, they they left. Didn't, that's it. They oh. didn't care what the encore was. They're like, yeah. ah, that's it. I heard what I, I heard what I needed. That's what I came for, you know? It's like a $60, $70 ticket. Man, you paid 70 bucks to hear like four minutes worth of music. Right. Fuck out of here. But yeah. yeah, you're right. It was in Middletown. And yeah, after they played that. And then they, if they always play other stuff, you know, they play Hot Rails to Hell. They play ME262, uh, Dominance and Submission. They, they get all these old, great fucking songs. Yeah. And, uh, but, you know, that's the song people want to hear is that one song you heard on the radio. So, yeah. I mean, it's a legendary song. I, I it is. Totally it's, get it. And it's a good fucking song. I don't want to shit on it because if, yeah. if I put it on the record, I listen to it. I like it. But oh, yeah. yeah, it's, uh, you know, live. It's almost like, here we go. I'm going to do it. Yeah, it's inevitable. Yeah. All right, Chris, back to you. Well, um, again, similar situation with Ryan. And again, a, a technically a cult band. I was going to say last night, Pete and I saw the cult uh up in new haven connecticut and it was the same exact scenario the was crowd was was dead for you know 70 percent of the show but then they did firewoman and she sells sanctuary and everybody including the girl next the chubby girl sitting next to pete they dump up jump up and start dancing i thought she was going to drop her panties any second but for the first 60 minutes of the show she was completely completely asleep so yes. yeah Similar situation. I knew exactly the two fucking songs you're going to say to when you yeah. said they called. I'm like, ah, oh, I could he telegraphed that from a mile out. Oh, yeah, for sure, for <laughs> sure. But the one song that they did do last night, and I I, I seen I seen uh, The Cult about uh, about 17 times. I have to double check my numbers, but it's right around there. So a decent amount, but they always seem to play the song that I fucking hate, Revolution. And I'm like, man, it's always late in the set. Yeah. And I'm like, in my head, it just grinds this the show to a screeching halt. This slow, wimpy kind of ballad. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, man, I hate this song. It's kind of a, I see. I don't mind the song, but it's kind of a momentum killer to have totally. at the like 75 percent mark of the set. Right. right? It's so, so late in the set, I'm like, really, you're, you're you're doing this now? So yeah, I hate that song, and I hate that they played it last night. And it wasn't a long set, which Pete and I will talk about later on another video. But man, that one song, I wish I could have taken out of last night's set and I would take it out of all future cult sets. Because I just can't stand it. You know, Ian Asbury goes into his little rap beforehand, starts talking about, you know, be a revolution, whatever. And I look over at Chris and he's rolling his eyes and I'm like, here it comes. That song of the night. And he's like, no. (laughs) Yeah, I I hate that song. Yeah. All right. My next choice is. Again, I don't really dislike it, but I just, man, I don't need to hear it live anymore. Uh, Deep Purple, Hush. It's like they play it all the time now, though for many, many years when I would go see Deep Purple, they did not play it. I don't know why all of a sudden it's like, why? Because it's easy for Ian to sing? Why why all of a sudden this like renewed interest over the last 20 years that Hush has to be in the set list every night? And sometimes even the closer, which is kind of strange. You know? What I remember, Pete, and I, and I could be wrong. I mean, I know you know way more about Deep Purple than I than I do. But what I remember was they brought it back on the House of Blue Light tour because it was on that double live record. It was I don't on that nobody's they, home. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember them doing it previously with with Ian Gillen. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, and then they brought it back with that, and then it seems to be fairly consistent. It's never left. Yeah, yeah. That, they did not play that in the '70s, and I don't know whether Ian didn't want to sing it. Or, or what and i don't know why all of a sudden he just kind of adopted it as his i mean i don't i don't dislike the song right I'm just like god they've got so many other great tunes it's like yeah. why that seemed like a little bit of a yeah you could get rid of that i agree it just yeah. kind of, I mean, there's, there's a lot of other ones 
Yeah. They got a lot of good fucking albums too. So yeah, they do. And and again, I don't know whether they play that as kind of like the one homage in the set to the first line of Mark One. Maybe that was like their first kind of big hit. But but you're right. I mean, they they ignored it for so many years, and then you know to bring it back into the '80s, and they've never they've never looked back. They play it all the time, and I'm like, and it, I think it's a strange closing encore too i mean you know i don't know i just they've got so many other really good songs from you know that when gillen was fronting the band i just never understood why they play it all the time you know if they want to dust it out every now and then that's fine like i said i don't dislike the song but man i mean i'd rather hear like a cool deep cut off of uh, who do we think we are or you know maybe a, another you know a song from the steve morse era you know from the last 25 years but you know they got to keep playing hush and i'm like eh, all right yeah. whatever so I'll, yeah. I'll take kentucky woman over hush i will too yeah i'm not even i'm not crazy <laughs> about kentucky woman <laughs> it's the first one that popped in my head <laughs> I don't know, man. You know, I mean, there's uh, how about Mandrake Root? They want to play something from the early albums. Play that. Right. They used to play that all the time in the early 70s, you know, but uh, eh, whatever. All right, Ryan, back to you. All right, so now we're at the point where, uh, like I said, I don't go see a lot of big stadium tours. I go to a lot of club shows, so Priest Made It and Blois to Cult are like my three regular, I'll go see them. And I do, I go see your eye heap a lot, but I couldn't give a single song by them. I couldn't I, either. I was like, this, this, here. I, was like, I was like, I wanted to pick them, but I'm like, ah, I don't. I mean, they do Easy Living a lot, but I love that song. And it's like, I do too. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So I don't give a fuck. So, and they always play enough stuff that it's so I couldn't pick your eye heap. So I'm like, man, what am I going to pick? So I thought, I've seen him a couple of times, but uh, it's a band that started sucking ass due to my age uh, before I got in, you know, by the time I got into metal in the 90s music, they already were sucking ass. And it's a band that traditionally people pick on a lot, but we don't seem to pick on them a lot on this show. I think it's such low hanging fruit. And that band's Metallica. Uh, and so I'm like, I recall the interview I read a couple of years ago with, uh, they toured with the sing- uh, Avenged Sevenfold. And I believe, who, who sucks by the way. And I remember the, I think it was the singer from Avenged Sevenfold said something to the effect of, you know, every night we're out there, we tour Metallica and we see the crowd, we see the reaction they get, you know, you watch their whole set. And these songs and the album that the whole, like they'll play Ride the Lightning, people love it. They play Master of Puppets, people love it. They play Black and Der One, people love it. The one album they play where the whole fucking crowd goes fucking nuts, you know, side to side, front to back, is the Black album. And I'm like, you know what song? Every time I've seen him, like, I don't like anything best of justice for all. I'm one of those fucking elitist pricks. I don't give a fuck. But uh, the one song especially that grinds my ass is Nothing Else Matters. Oh, yeah. Because I hate. When bands, I mean, obviously they softened up and that's their prerogative, but I've always hated like when bands like that do like the sappy ballad track. It's like a slow dance at a wedding kind of, I, I don't know. Like I never liked that album, but that song in particular is just like makes you makes me grind my fucking teeth. And uh, yeah, but it's been years since I've, this is where I almost like hypothetical because it's been years since I've seen them. I have seen them a couple of times, but I don't know. The amount of money they charge. I remember a couple of years ago when I saw three, it was Anthrax, Slayer, and Megadeth. So three of the four big four. They played in Pennsylvania. Tickets were pretty reasonable, small venue or medium-sized venue. You know, but you get right up front, general mission. And it was great. And they did the same tour again with Metallica. And that was at Yankee Stadium. The tickets cost 10 times as much. The beer is 48 fucking dollars or six miles away. You got to watch it at the fucking Jumbotron. Where you might as well just sit home and sit on a couch if you're going to watch a concert on a fucking TV. You know, so I skipped that. I'm like, nah, I'm good. I saw the other three. I don't need to see this. So, uh, but yeah, fuck the song. Nothing else matters. I'm throwing it in there. So, uh, just to pick on Metallica a bit. Because they, they always get off. Like, we're always slagging Maiden and Priest for good reasons. But uh, Metallica always kind of walk away. We don't really talk about it much, you know. So. Yeah, I don't. Uh, yeah, that song. That's another. Because I saw them a bunch of times in the early mid '90s, and they were playing that all the time. And I was every like, show, oh, man. It's a momentum killer. That song. Totally. And, uh, speaking of which, they always seem to play. Nothing else matters. Was on my honorable mentions because yeah, I, I think the last time I saw Metallica was 2005. So it was my honorable mention because I haven't seen them in whatever that is, 17 years, and yeah. no plan to see them anytime soon. But yeah, nothing else matters. Not only they play it. But it's always the like second to last song that closes the set. Like it is a fucking total momentum. Like why? I, I almost think are you like giving yourselves a breather? That's why you're doing it before whatever they would close with one or blackened or whatever the fuck song it is. I don't know, but but I, yeah, I completely agree that song is shit. I just watched. I was clicking around and I saw James Hetfield 
was talking about writing that song for a girlfriend he broke up with or something. And he's like, oh, I was afraid to show the other guys. I'm like, yeah, maybe you should have kept that one to yourself. You should have kept that in the fucking dark, yeah. you know. Kept that in the rehearsal room there, buddy. Totally. <laughs> All right. That's, that's Chris. All yeah. right, so yeah, that's an honorable mention. Uh, for me, uh, one of my all-time favorite bands, uh, they have done uh, a limited amount of reunion shows, but I have traveled to eight of them so far. Um, I'm thinking about going a ninth time in Chicago. It's just uh, in September, but with the, the fucking cost of everything, I'm, I'm a little on the fence. And they're playing the Riot Fest, and the rest of the lineup sucks. Um, but it is the Misfits, uh, the original Misfits, as they're called now. I was able to catch um, eight shows of the reunited misfits so far, but man, the song I have never liked and was not a, a hit for them at all in the original incarnation of the band uh, is Last Caress. And now it's their closing song of their set because yeah, now for the last 30 years, everybody knows it because of Metallica. Yeah. But in the, in the you know, 70s and 80s, uh the misfits like hardly ever played last caress um so yeah i just i'm sick of that song uh you know the misfits only have like 60 songs but there's a couple they always they always skip even though they do like 30 songs a night so i would take anything over over last caress because i'm just sick to death of it <laughs> well didn't they didn't jerry play it but he changed the lyrics so I wasn't talking about probably and jerry, and killing jerry, and... jerry did get fucking weird for a while and Glenn came back and now they're singing about raping mothers and killing babies. Oh yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> back to the original. Yeah, yeah. no, right. yeah. That's so. people probably know that song goes to Metallica. I don't. Oh yeah, and the, and the whole audience. That song is it. never leaving that set list. Ever. No, no, never. N- never. And you know, like we said with with Blue Oyster Cult and the Cult, you know, that you know they're they're, they're ripping through you know Wolf's Blood and you know, Demonomania and the audience is dead. Right? They do Last Caress. Everybody's on their feet singing along. I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake. You know, I'm like, yeah. Price of doing it's, business. Uh, Price of doing business, brother. Price yeah. of doing business. <laughs> All right, my next pick is kind of along the same lines of Ryan's uh, Nothing Else Matters by Metallica. So this is a band who's, you know, for the most part, when you go see them live over the last 35 years or so, you know, their set list is pretty furious and frantic and, and, and whatnot. And then you get to the whistle song and I'm like, oh, again. And it's Winds of Change by the Scorpions. Oh, that's a fucking great pick. <laughs> that's a terrible song. I didn't song. think of that at all. That is a ter- yeah, I didn't think of that one oh, bit. That song comes ass for that's miles. Terrible. Uh, it's like, you know, that song comes on, you're like, you know, you're so into the whole set and then, you know, yeah. And I'm like, that's oh, it. God, I'm going to the bathroom. I can't stand it. Killer. The momentum anymore. killer. It's just like, yeah, I don't even, I mean, that's, I'm not a fan of that song anyway, but, and, you yeah. know, they have to play it because, you know, so many people love that song. It's, it was such an important song, everybody says, and it's so significant and blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, oh, <sighs> yeah, I know, exactly. Yeah. For me, it's like that is a complete set killer for me. Yes. I, again, I know for some people they love it because everybody sings and whistles along and your cell phones or in the old days, everybody had the lighters going. And I'm like, oh my God. But me, I was kind of like, all right, come on, get blackout or something cool. Yeah. coming. I don't, I don't want to hear this anymore. So, yeah. yeah. But it does seem like there was a tour or two that they dropped it. But yeah, it's it's back again. Oh, yeah, it's you back, know, yeah. And it'll probably never leave. And yeah, that's nice. a great, great pick. Sticking yeah. the fuck around for that. That's a good choice. Wow. Yeah. I didn't even they think got a couple, that. like, I don't. I don't need to hear Rocky like a hurricane ever again, but it's not a bad song. It's just right. Yeah. Oh my God. I'll take that, that any know. day of the week. Any day of the week. Oh, a oh, hundred times over. Yeah. What, yeah. That's the, Ooh, dude, that whistle. That's it. You know, <laughs> buckle up. Uh, no good. All right, Ryan, back to you. All right. So, uh, I'll come that in. I'll come back to the honorable mention. So I'm going to go with, uh, since I picked on Metallica, I'm going to pick on Megadeth. Uh, so with Negadeth, I'm the same as Metallica. I only really give a fuck about the first four albums. Although they didn't, I'm not going to say they shit the bed on equal matter because they do have good songs, some very, very good songs uh, after uh, Rust and Peace. But generally, like, there's no album I need to hear all the way through. Uh, and the one right after Rust and Peace, Countdown, some great songs on that album. You know, it's more of a heavy metal. It's not really thrash anymore, but it's, it's well-written heavy metal. Uh, I have real no problems, no qualms with that album. But man, I never, ever, ever want to hear symphony of destruction ever i hear that opening riff 
and like I just start grinding my fucking teeth. I hate that fucking song so much. And it's just always going to be in their set. They're always going to play it. Uh, their set lists are generally pretty good. Dave generally does pretty well. Uh, I've seen them do the whole Rust and Peace album. They play, you know, a bunch of early stuff. You know, they don't really fuck around. They play a pretty good set. They give people what they paid money to see, but man. And people want to hear Symphony Destruction, so it's kind of what they want to fucking hear. So who am I to complain? But man, I, 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 I hit, oh man, that riff just, I don't know what's more irritating to me within metal. The opening riff to that song or the opening riff to Walk by Pantera. I hear those two and I immediately just like want to walk through the wall like Sylvester the Cat and just fucking keep on walking to the next county. Wow. So, yeah. And Ryan, you don't want to dance like the marionette? No, God, I destruction, no. <laughs> and they, I mean, they got some other shitty songs. Don't get me wrong. Uh, many, many shitty songs. They kept, I mean, they're, he's been very reliably putting out albums the whole time. He never really slowed down or stopped. So, you know, obviously some ones like Endgame are a little better and some ones not so good. But, uh, and Countdown's not a bad album at all. I mean, I fucking hate, and it's, it's arguably their biggest song ever, you know. I can't think of another Megadeth. I mean, the song Peace Sells kind of got some uh, yeah. pop, but that's a good song. But uh, actually, that's my favorite album by them. But yeah, Symphony, pff, fuck that song. So that's my fifth pick. And I still like Megadeth, but I hate, hate that fucking song. And they are a really good live band, I will say. And yeah, I don't think yeah. I've ever seen them where they haven't been like, you know, may, I think I saw them once or twice where, uh, you know, it was on like a huge bill. And by the time they came on, I was kind of like, uh, there was a, uh, but they're generally pretty good. There was a couple of tours I saw where I don't know if Dave was having back problems. He might have been in pain or something. I don't know. But they did just seem kind of like stilted and they didn't, I don't know. It just, it seemed a little off. But then I think I recall reading that he was having some pain issues. So now I can fuck everything up. You know, if you're, especially with back pain. But uh, then the last time I actually saw them, they played a secret show at St. Vitus under uh, oh, yeah, the, the Rattleheads. And it was fucking great because you see Megadeth in a club that holds like 200 people and they got up there and they played the song. They opened with the song Rattle, Rattlehead. Of course, they played Symphony for the Destruction. But uh, yeah, it was a good set. And that kind of reinvigorated. Do you um, remember who was on second guitar for that show? No, I'd have to look it up. Or like what year was that approximately? Uh, let's see. That was a while ago. It was a while ago. I'm going to say like five, six. I'm, I'm really bad with this. Five, six, maybe seven years ago. Okay. Uh, I, I mean, I have a t-shirt from it that has the date. It's kind of like the... Uh, the, the it might, what, Chris Broderick? Chris? Was that Chris? That's, what I, well, that's, that's probably head, That's that what area. I was going to say. Yeah. That, wouldn't be, that wouldn't be Drover, I think, right? Because I think he was... Yeah, I think he was going by then. It was after Endgame. It was a couple of years after Endgame, which was 2009. It was probably Chris Broderick like, before Kiko, I would say, right? Yes. Yeah. It was 2015, 20... 14, 15, 16, somewhere in that neighborhood, maybe 13. Yeah, it's probably Christmas. Somewhere around there, yeah. But uh, I know I have a t-shirt for it where it has like the, the logo for the St. Vitus bar, but it has the, instead of a skull, it's got a big rattlehead and superimposed on it. So it's pretty cool. But yeah, that was a great show. And I haven't seen them since. So, you know, talking a lot of shit here, but, uh, you know, they I always- I haven't seen them in a few years either. They always deliver a lot. So. I've seen them. Yeah. Yeah, but I still hate that fucking song. They're always going to play it. And people like to hear it. And that's, you know, it is what it is, but- I'm not one of those people that like to hear, but I'll still go see them. You know, if I have another chance, I probably will go again. Cool. All right, Chris, you're well, number five. Coincidentally, mine is the next pick is, is a Megadeth song, which is a band that I still like. And I, I, I have not seen them uh, since the last time I saw them was, was the pandemic pre pandemic. So it's been a couple of years. I know they came around uh, not that long ago, but it was kind of a shitty bill that had trivium and somebody else. I really didn't fucking care about. Uh, but I have seen Megadeth a lot, um, but like it, they don't play it every tour, but like 80% of the time they play it every time and it's sweating bullets. And I Hello, fucking, the, re, uh, the oh yeah, that's, that's the other worst one. I, I, I cannot stand that. I mean, I, even on the record, I, I fucking, ca I, I have yeah. never liked that song. I don't know how anybody could like that song. I mean, every time I hear that song, like I can see in my head, like da -da -da. Main, da -da -da. In, in the white shirt, da -da -da. dance around like a fucking idiot, <laughs> and I'm like, how did this? How did this song make the cut? Like this is the worst shit, but they play it a lot, they do. and I'm I'm always thrilled when it's not in the set list. But yeah, a good amount of time it is, and I I fucking cannot stand it. It was 2016 they played Saint Vitus, but you know what I uh. 
in my other job, we used to have a Sirius XM on, and I would I put on a lot of Sirius channels, but I fucking hated Liquid Metal because they just yeah. played. They same, play the same songs over and over. Do the same thing on uh, Ozzy's Boneyard. Oh, it's, it's, it's just same, as bad. And it's actually, like the, same, I, I it's like the put, same 40 songs over and over again. It's terrible. And I yeah. wouldn't put either channel on. I, I listened to literally all these other channels, which I was a little less familiar with, but if they only played two Megadeth songs on either of those channels. One was Sweating Bullets and the other was Symphony of Destruction. There you go. I'm like, man, they have so, they have the first, every song on the first four albums, yeah. except maybe the cover songs, is uh, are fucking great. Nope, we're going to play these fucking two songs over. I mean, how, over. How, how many albums does Rush have? And uh, Boneyard, they would only play Tom Sawyer or Limelight. It was like, yeah, oh, for it. fuck's sake, man. Over, yeah, it's yeah, it's got a whole catalog. Nope, yeah. fuck those songs. We're going to play those two. Yeah, the Sweating Bullets sucks. Yeah. I, I don't remember I, what I, album that was on. I don't think I have that album. Wasn't that, that one that Countdown to Destruction? Was it? Countdown to Extinction, yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Countdown to oh, Extinction. Oh. Oh. They might be right. You know what? Actually, I like the album after that more. Euthanasia. I thought that was an even. Euthanasia's yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah, it's a not a bad album. Right. They're both actually album. really good albums, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Those, yeah, those two songs fucking suck. Yeah. They're not Rust in Peace, but, you know. Right. Yes. But for what they are, yeah, they're good albums. Just yeah. A couple dud songs. All right. My number five. I'm going to go a little little mellower here. Um, it's a band I, I love a lot, and I've seen them tons of times, and I still go see them fairly regularly. I'm, I'm a Journey fan. I like Journey. Journey's fun for me. But man, there is nothing that kills a journey set for me like fucking open arms. Oh, oh that's brutal. Oh, God. I was never a fan of the song. And it's just like, you know, Journey plays a lot of good rockers and a lot of good, you know, arena rock tracks that, you know, get everybody into it. And then all of a sudden, dun, 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 and I'm like, Oh no! It's like all right. I'm gonna go disappear. That's the slow for dance. Five song. That's the stuff. fucking yeah. That is the slow dance song. You know, if you want to play it at a wedding, I get it. But at a rock concert, man, it's just and I get. I know it's one of their biggest hits of all time, and you know all the ladies certainly love it, and there's a lot of guys who like it too. But man, I'm just like oh. God, it's like, you know, and then they'll 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 get done playing that and they'll play like Wheel in the Sky or any way you want it, like a big party rocker. And I'm like, ah, oh, you know, you, you can't go from that to that. It's like, uh. so yeah, open arms for me. Get rid of it. I, I never want to hear that in the journey set ever again. You know, you know why that journey song pisses me off, especially uh for for a very particular, very particular reason. Because one of my favorite soundtracks, maybe my favorite soundtrack of all time, is for the movie Heavy Metal. And every fucking song on the soundtrack is great. It's not metal. It's all hard rock from the early 80s. But every song on it is great, except, except. for fucking Open Arms. And why, I remember when, when, when I got that back when it first came out, I'm like, why is this song on this soundtrack? It doesn't. It, 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 it's just it's so stupid. It goes from Nazareth, uh, Riggs, Journey. Then it goes right back to Grand Funk Railroad, Cheap Trick, Black Sabbath. Man, and I, I, I listen to this album a lot, the soundtrack a lot. And... <laughs> I don't think I've actually ever listened to that song on the soundtrack ever. I'll skip it every yeah, fucking time. Well, when I skip, when I ripped it digitally to iTunes, I deleted that song from the album, so it's not even on my fucking iTunes. I was, I was gonna say, as soon as you said "Open Arms," my mind immediately went to the hot naked cartoon chick uh, getting fucked by Harry Canyon in front of their refrigerator. She's yeah. like Harry, and whatever the hell she says, and she opens up the fr- he opens up the fridge to get a beer, and then. She's there naked with her 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 flower petal nipples. Uh, so that's what I think of. You know, heard of stars and stripes forever. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so that was that was where my mind went when you said open. Exactly. Arms. I'm like, oh, I know that. I know that's what I associate yeah. that fucking song with. That's uh, what it be too. Me too. You know, so yeah. Uh, speaking yeah. of journey, though, as soon as you say them, I also associate "Don't Stop Believing" with drunk people at the bar at 3 a.m. Everybody starts fucking <laughs> oh, yeah. that song like war you know, but those are the two songs. Yeah, we'll put those two songs aside. And, you know, keep the rest. <laughs> Ryan, you got any honorable mentions? I do. Uh, so I picked on Metallica for having a sappy, shitty fucking ballad, and I'm gonna pick on Ozzy for having the same thing. And uh, I, I admit, I'm not really a big fan of a lot of his solo stuff. Uh, Mark at the Moon's last album I like, start to finish, and after that, it's just good songs. Some some albums a lot better than others. But man, uh, Mama, I'm coming home. Oh. Fuck that! I hate that song. They play that all the time song. too. On Ozzy's Boneyard, you know, they yes. played a lot of Ozzy song because obviously it's his name. So you got a pretty good mix of Ozzy tunes on that channel. Some a lot better, but fuck, I hate oh. that song. Hate that song, Jesus. Yeah. 
Uh, it's just that so stupid soft. Do you even still sing that? I mean, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I haven't seen Ozzy solo in a couple of years, but I would while. imagine he yeah. still does. I'm sure he does because it was. I think it was his, his biggest I mean, single. I think right. His yeah. Biggest yeah. single in years. Yeah. And no, didn't let me write that song. Let me wrote it. Yeah. Let me wrote it. It was a huge MTV hit with the video. Oh yeah, it's probably bigger than Crazy Train. I don't know. I mean, like PDH it. still plays it. It was a so, big hit. Yeah. It's, it's so soft, like you can play that in fucking Macy's. Oh yeah. Like, well, like you said, like at a wedding, you could you, know? you could hear that at a wedding. Absolutely. You hear that anywhere? Yeah. Like yeah. Crazy Train, you're not really gonna hear. No. Most places because that's that's a metal track, but yeah. Mama, I'm coming home. You can play that at the old folks' home. You can play that at the bingo parlor. You can play that at fucking shop right, you know, grocery store. So fuck that song. That's true. Um, that's my only honorable mention now. I mean, I could probably think of a couple others, but I don't want to pick bands that like I've never seen or only seen once or twice because it's uh but uh yeah, Ozzy, I've seen it. It has been a couple of years, but I've seen Ozzy several times. Sometimes at Ozfest, but I saw a couple solo tours too. But I remember every fucking time I saw them, they played that song and it nice. sucked every fucking time. Yeah. But people love it. They do love it, so Chris, you got any honorables? Yeah, I got a couple. Uh the first one is a band I hadn't seen in in quite a few years, uh, we all saw them at the Chance of Poughkeepsie. Um, I think that was in March. And uh, yeah, they were really good. I, I, I know Ryan had seen them previously a couple months earlier. But man, two of the songs that I fucking hate, I hate them. They play them all the time. And I think they're the worst fucking songs from this band. I'm talking about Overkill. And the two songs I hate are Hello from the Gutter. <laughs> and the the other one I absolutely fucking can't stand. E elimination. Oh, I like that song. I'm like, oh Gosh, my man. fucking god. That's a that's a. I, I can't, like that. that's a fast fucking thrash song. I like. I don't that. care. I can't stand it. <laughs> I, I can't. I just. Uh, and yeah. they're always playing those. They're always fucking playing them. Oh, they're always gonna play those. I mean, songs. The, you know, the last time we saw them, they you know, thank God they didn't do. I hate this and I hate that. I hate skinny and I hate fat. I fucking hate that song too. That's a pretty good Bobby Blitz. <laughs> Thank, and I like Bobby Blitz, but man, a couple of those songs, which which are popular, just rub me the wrong way. And I, I've always hated Hello from the Gutter, Elimination, and, and I hate, but they didn't do I Hate when we saw them. Uh, wait, was that in March, I want to say? Uh, I'm trying to, because I saw them. You saw them in Jersey. I saw them three right? times. You saw them in Jersey. For, oh, did you? All right. Yeah, so we all Jersey, saw them in three times the recently. chance. Yeah, I saw him yeah, in was, Jersey. Was, at, like what? Two weeks before the pre-show, I think. So it was early March. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, so that's why I keep yeah. thinking March. Yeah. Actually, I saw him two times because I saw him in Jersey at the Montclair mm-hmm. Theater. No, at Wellmont Theater in Montclair. Right. That was great. Huge pit. They played Eliminate. They played. And I was in the pit the whole time, and it was fucking awesome. Then we saw him with the Chance. Yeah. Then I saw him. Uh, Did you go to Florida to see them? Well, I went to see him in Florida and Orlando, but I got real fucking drunk on whiskey, which is my own damn fault. And like half song in, I ended up eating shit in the pit, ripped my arm up, and I had blood everywhere. And oh, Jesus. I'm wrapping my arm up with fucking bandages. So I missed the whole set. I was outside, arm wrapped in bandages, blood everywhere, like a fucking idiot. You know, and I'm like, man, this is really going to hurt when I sober up. You know, so I had this huge fucking gouge in my arm. But at the moment, oh my God. they're like, does this hurt at all? Like, nah, it doesn't hurt one bit. But Not I'm now, but tomorrow, yeah. I get a hammer. I want to wake up I'm like, man, what the fuck did I do? And I woke up and I'm like, man, that fucking hurts. So, yep. So I really only saw him twice. Uh, I was about to see him a third time and I fucked myself out of it, you know. Oof. Whiskey did be dirt, uh, whiskey did be dirty, but yeah, the demon alcohol, stay away yeah. from that stuff. I'll stick with the more whiskey times. Mm-hmm. But yeah, both those songs I I fucking hate them. <laughs> Got any others? Uh yeah. Mm-hmm. Even though I haven't seen them in a couple of years, um uh, man, I have seen these guys a lot and I started I really started uh, it's this is the band like you know, Ryan had mentioned yeah, some bands we don't shit on that much. We don't shit on these guys that much. But once I started writing down songs I'm sick of, I, I was like, wow, that's a whole bunch. And I'm like, I'm sure there's more, so I should just stop. Um, but I've seen these guys a fucking ton over the years. Anthrax. And oh, yeah. Yeah. I started, you yeah. know, first off, enough with the fucking covers. So I don't, you got to get rid of uh, Got the Time, Bring the Noise, and Antisocial. They're just, just fucking get out of here. Mm-hmm. Do your own songs. If you want to do one of the three covers, okay. But don't give me all three. And then um, especially because, like, I'm the Man is a rap song and Bring the Noise is a rap song. I'm like, well, why don't you also do that other fucking rap song you did with those rappers like WTFO or whatever the fuck they were in the 80s. But anyway, fuck those three covers. 
But then I also wrote down, and I'm like, oh, there's probably more, but I just stopped here. Uh, with two songs I absolutely fucking hate, NFL and Antisocial. Um, um, no, there was another one. No, Got the Time. No, wait. Yeah, NFL, <laughs> Antisocial, Bring the Noise, I'm the Man, Got the Time. Fuck all those songs. That's I like hate them, and I'm sure there's more. Set. It's like, yeah, it's like yeah. a third of the set. And they got some great songs, too. They do. Very deep in the old, uh, you know. Right. I mean, would it fucking kill them to play something off spreading the disease a little more or probably, you know, yeah. something, something off the first record. I mean, holy shit. It's one of the reasons why I kind of stopped listening to them because most yeah. of the popular songs that they always play live are all the joke songs. And I'm kind of like, I, I want to hear their serious stuff. They never yeah. play they got some good shit. And I mean, even some of their later stuff is really pretty good. Yeah. The last time I saw them was that tour with Slayer and Megadeth and he did the whole Among the Living album. Oh yeah, the set was kind of like aimed that way, but like, I it's been so long since I've seen him, but like I love the album Persistence of Time. That's, yeah, a, that's a really good album, album. and yeah. I mean I couldn't tell if they play a lot of shit from that, but they should. That's a great fucking thrash album. Yeah, from like I think ninety one or so. You know when I think that was not ninety or ninety one. Yeah, 91, yeah, right around the same time, and uh, I think Rust of Peace came out. I think, but yeah, that's a great album, and they should stick to that. But yeah, yeah. but yeah, I haven't seen him in man. That tour was at least. All right, a decade ago now. I'd say. I was going to say, yeah, it could have been. Solid I want to say almost like 20, 2010, 2011. Yeah, it might even be longer than 10 I, years. I, Ryan, I did the same exact thing that you did. I went to the tour that was, uh, right, Megadeth, Anthrax, and, and Slayer. And I love Slayer. And then they came around, you know, a year later, and it was those three bands. But now with Metallica. But now the tickets went up $400. Way more, and I'm yeah, like, just, way more money. You said way further away. I'm like, I'm not doing it. As much as I love Slayer and I hate to skip a Slayer tour, I'm like, fuck it. I am I'm not doing it. Yeah. I know a lot of people that went to that. They didn't go to the I'm like I, I saw them in right. PA for like 50 bucks. I was, yeah. I was right in the pit, right up front. And you're like, ah, we're going to the big floor. I'm like, I just saw that and I don't need to see Metallica. That's it. You know? But you go spend 200 bucks and 60 bucks to park, you know, because Yankee Stadium. Oh, yeah. Exactly. It's fuck, so. Yeah, no doubt. Cool. So yeah, I think I think those were uh those were all my my uh, honorable mentions. Okay. Yeah, I don't have a lot. Uh, uh, let's see. What do I got here? Uh, White Snake is this love? Oh, oh. That's, no, a yeah, that's a great pick. That's a good. God, God, that's right up there with the fucking winds of change. Yeah, it's you know, I mean, they can't not play it right because it's one of their biggest singles. Yes, but it's like it's so unlike everything else they do. Yeah, you know that the you know ladies got to hear it, and uh, yeah, it's oh, man, it's gotta give gotta give the 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 songs to the ladies to drop their panties too. So that's yeah, such, you know, it's gotta it's, play those hits for them. It's such a momentum killer, man. It's just, it yeah. totally is. Um, here's what a prog band that I love and I've seen so many times. Uh, yes, seen all good people. That's, <laughs> again they've got so many great songs and i get it it's one of their big early hits but i just it, it's like uh, enough already uh, ironically enough i went to see their old lead singer john anderson just a week or two ago in sugarloaf at the sugarloaf performing arts center and he played with all these you know the paul green um legends of oh, rock right. right the school of rock legends school of, of rock, rock, they're the kids. Paul rock. Yeah, yeah all the kids right all the teenagers and of course they played it and I totally got into it because for the first time ever, it seemed like a band was playing that song and they were into it. And I think one of the reasons why I don't like seeing all good people live anymore is because if you go see Yes play it over the last 30 years, they act like they're sick of playing it. So if they're sick of fucking playing it, I'm sick of hearing it. Right. Whereas you had all these teenagers playing the music and John up there singing, who sounds great still at 78 years old or whatever he is. The kids are totally into it. And I was like, you know what? For the first time in like 30 years, I'm interested in getting into hearing seeing old good people. Get those kids to play Don't Fear the Reaper because boys are cold. It's like, well, we, I know we got to play it. So we're going to yeah. play it. But... And it probably would rule if they did because these yeah. kids are so good. Yeah. You've seen Yes a lot more than me. Do they still do? Because uh, the song, when, when you mentioned them, the first song that comes to mind is fucking Owner of a Lonely Heart. Do they uh they trot that one out all the time or they, they do yeah they yeah. do yeah that's another one <laughs> because you know what it is it's like that song is so indicative of like a very small part of yes's career where they were a completely different band yes so now when you hear i mean 
you they play it live and like nobody that's in the band now even appeared on that on that song but it was such a big hit that yeah. but it was such a huge hit that you have to play it so like john anderson isn't in the band anymore trevor raven's not in the band anymore alan white's passed away recently right uh you know tony k on keyboards he's not in the band anymore so you Chris got Flyers steve the howe hates it I know for a fact he hates playing that song because it wasn't his time in the band and he's playing someone else's guitar parts. And, you know, so it's just ridiculous. And I, that, that's an even better choice, I think, than mine. Because and you know what? That song just, sucks. I mean, at least, you know, the people, I think it's a good song, but just overplayed. But I'm, I don't know. It's like a shitty 80s pop song. And I like 80s pop, but I don't like that song. I think there were other bands that did it a lot better. And, you know, but it, it was the biggest hit, so I'm like, yep, you know, they're gonna. Yeah, because I mean, that's like a song, classic rock radio, still plays still all, plays all the time. the time. You're never gonna let it go. Yeah. What else do I got here? Um, so I've seen The Who a lot in my life, and uh, I like the song, but A, it's kind of long, and B, it's kind of monotonous. And I think, like, it just again breaks up kind of a momentum of a live show. Uh, who are you? It's like, you know, it's coming every time. Who are you? Who, 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 who? And I'm like, all right, whatever. And it's, you know, it's like seven minutes long. And it's just, uh, I don't know. I just, I've gotten to the point with seeing the who that I'm like, I, I wish they would just play. They've got so, so many songs, throw something else in there. In fact, you could fit two 60 songs in there because they're probably two, three minutes long in place of who are you? And I'd be okay with that. Uh, ACDC, you shook me all night long. I was just about to say oh. that. Oh, I was just about to fucking say that. That's great. Pay. I don't want to hear it at a bar. I don't want to hear yeah. it at a wedding. I don't want to hear it at an ACDC concert. I sure Never. as shit don't want to hear it in the parking lot playing out of every car in the parking lot of an ACDC oh. concert because that's just as bad as people playing Paranoid before they go in to see Black Sabbath. And it happens. Or my, my last pick is uh, Rock and Roll All Night by Kiss, right? How many times you go oh, see Kiss yeah. live and there are people blasting that out in the parking lot? Like, so like on a loop. Right. It's like you haven't heard it a million times in your life already. You're going to hear it in about an hour and a half, but you got to listen to it again. Just wait, just wait a little bit. Just yeah. wait a little while. They're going to play it. I promise. You play it, right? It. Play, play something rare in the parking lot. You know you're not going to hear, right? I think, Ryan, I think we, that happened to us when we went uh, with Keeler uh, and Pete Morano. We went to see Black Sabbath at PNC. And yeah, remember we were like walking into the, walking from the parking lot into the venue and like, all these cars were playing like either War Pigs, Iron Man, or Paranoid, the Children of the Grave, and we're all like, "Why? That's you didn't hear them in like in, in no time. Why don't you play?" Yeah. And you were yeah, you specifically said, "Play one of the Tony Martin albums, right?" Because you know yeah, you're not going to hear that. On just the to mix it up, Pigs. You know you're not going to hear those songs. Oh no, no, but that's you know is what it is, right? You know you know what uh, was the final fucking nail in the coffin for you? Shook me all night long. Was uh, I, I forget where I was? It was probably at a wedding or somewhere. And I heard that song with like a fucking like electronic techno dance track, like bolted to it to make it more like dancey so you could play it. And I was such, and I'm like, man, fuck me, fuck this. Ah, and I, was, I just sat there just depressed. So I'm like, why does this sound, what something sounds wrong? And then I realized that they put a, like basically an electronic, you know, just same beat the whole time, just doot, 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 you know, just behind that song to make it just suck even more. Gave it the ZZ Top treatment almost. Oh, right? but it was it was it, and like the song still had the regular drums, like it was a regular song. They just put that on top of everything else just to make it like danceable. I don't know because out, out of context, we take it being overplayed. It's not a bad song. The whole album, Back in Black's a great album. It's a good song, but after hearing it four hundred zillion fucking times, yeah, it's, it's catchy. I I will give it all the credit in the world. It's really catchy. It's a well constructed song. I mean, I bought that album when it came out. It's and a great it was album. Never one of my favorite songs on the album. No, ever. it's not one of their best. But and they have so many good fucking like, ACDC have so uh, many good fucking yeah. songs. Yeah. Back in the, day. the last time that I saw ACDC, which was the best ACDC show I ever saw, was when they got inducted the night before they got inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They played the Roseland, and uh, they opened with "You Shook Me All Night Long," which was great because it's like, oh, all right, out of the way. get out of the way, it's over. And the rest like of the, the set was killer. I like when bands do that. It's like a, it's not the same scale and magnitude, but uh, when I saw Exciter a couple months ago, great Canadian band, you know, they got a, a lot of stuff, but the two songs everybody knows is Heavy Metal Maniac and Violence and Force. The first song they played when they came out on stage was Violence and Force, and it kicked ass. Now everybody's all pumped up and they just got yeah. it out of the way. Like, all right, where do we go from here? And then they played a lot of good shit, but 
I kind of like when a band comes out and just like first yeah. run up the track. Well, back, you know, but you can get away with that if you're a band that doesn't appeal to like the masses who are looking for hits. Or, oh yeah, uh, right. Because and that's not that band. Yeah, well, a lot of these band. other bands we just talked about tonight could never get away with doing that. Nope, could never get away with doing that. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Priest came out and played "Living at the Midnight" as the first track. People would just leave after the first track. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. You know. Right. Yeah. It's be a little subversive, but yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's all I got. So yeah. that is all I got. So we we just spent uh, an hour talking about songs from bands we love that we never want to hear them play live on stage ever again. But you know what? They're not going to listen to us. So I guarantee yeah. we go see these bands again anytime soon. We will hear them all once. Steve Harris time. don't give a fuck what we think. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he does not. <laughs> not one bit. <laughs> well, I know for one, if I go see the Scorpions uh, later on this year, I will not be whistling along to Winter Change. <laughs> I'm going to go out to the merch table or go do something else. But right. I was looking. That's my <laughs> choice. So. so there you have it, everybody. Uh, songs you wish some of our favorite bands would drop from their set list. In the comments below, please list some of the bands you really like a lot that you go see often live that there's that one song that you just wish they would stop playing forever and ever, but you know probably deep down inside that they're never going to. So uh, put that down in the comments below and uh, visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, all together, all the damn, all the damn time. time. I believe we will not have a Hudson Valley Squares show next week. However, I will be here doing a live Q&A once again. So uh, stay tuned next Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for live Q&A with yours truly. So we'll do that for about an hour, an hour and a half. And then uh, we'll be back with some more programming on Monday, uh, the following Monday after that. So uh, for Ryan Scout and... Chris Allo, I am Pete Pardo. Thanks for watching, everybody. Please subscribe. If you haven't already, click on that little notification bell down below so uh, you get notified of all of our content as it posts here on the YouTube channel. And uh, we'll see you real soon. In fact, we'll see you tomorrow within the prog seat. Uh, take care, everybody. Bye-bye.